the men and women who did, and children who did survive when the war was over, uh, as I'm sure you probably know, the loyalists were evacuated from America and on the whole settled in Canada. African Americans were evacuated like uh, white loyalists from two points, from Charleston and from New York City which celebrated Evacuation Day, by the way, for many, many years after the American Revolution. That is, it was celebratory for the Americans who had won the war that these terrible loyalists were being forced to leave and go into exile. In New York, uh, they didn't have enough uh, Royal Navy ships to take everybody who wanted to leave. And so they commissioned merchant marine ships uh, to carry people to Canada. Uh, when they boarded African Americans on these ships, as soon as the ships got out to sea, the crew put the African Americans in irons, in manacles, put them down in the hold of the ship, took the ship to the West Indies, and sold these people into slavery. To his credit, when Admiral Birch heard what was going on, he was in charge of the evacuation. When he heard what was going on, he said, this is dishonorable, this is a, 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 a tragedy. And he said, we are going to make out inventories of every African American who gets on a ship. And if those people don't get off the ship in Canada, you will not be paid. One of the ironic results of this is we know more about African Americans in the second half of the 18th century because of this inventory. It's called, it became known as the Book of Negroes. And it included not just the names of the African Americans who were boarded onto these ships, but a physical description of them including any tribal markings or any tattoos or any scars from having been whipped that they had uh, on their bodies. It included their ages or as close to their ages in some cases as they could discover, any trades or crafts or skills that they had, whether the women had children and if they had children, even if the children weren't with the women on the ships, how many they had. And so there's a wealth of information about African-American life that comes out of this inventory that was done in order to protect African-American loyalists from uh, the, the, I want to use the word evil, from, from the behavior of these ship captains who wanted to make money. They weren't the only ones who did something like this. Even during the war, British soldiers who happened upon, if there was a patrol of British soldiers who happened upon these women or men traveling to the army camp, they told them, oh, you're safe with us, we'll, we'll escort you. And as soon as they were in their hands, they tied them up and they sold them back to American planters. So. The disillusionment uh, and the mistreatment of African Americans who had been searching for their own freedom and their own independence is really the, the thread that runs through everything that I discovered in my research. When they got to Canada, they had been promised by the, American go by the British government, who behaved really quite quite honorably toward white loyalists and black loyalists. They had been guaranteed land, uh, supplies to make it through the first year, uh, uh, not political rights, but freedom. When they got there, the white loyalists, including several of the churches, stole the land, confiscated the land. There was violence against the African Americans by the whites. They were the equivalent of race riots. Uh, there was one story of an African American minister who was uh, very well liked and a group of white families 
asked him to baptize their children. When the larger white community heard this, they burned the church to the ground and they attacked the African Americans in that town. What eventually happened, because the land was taken from them and because the supplies that were supposed to be handed out to the black families and to the black loyalists to make it through the winter and through the next spring were taken by the white loyalists, confiscated by the white loyalists, African Americans began to gather in what are the equivalent of ghetto communities. One of the African American towns, by the way, was named Birchtown in honor of the admiral who had, who had ensured their, their safety and their not being sold into the West Indies. In these towns, there was no employment. And when these African Americans would go out into the white communities like Halifax to try to find work, they would be attacked or arrested. It's no surprise that within a few years of the pop populating of Canada, 1,500 African American loyalists made a second exile voyage and went to Sierra Leone to start a new community of their own.